So why a career in cybersecurity? Before we address that, let's talk about what cybersecurity is. There's this fundamental concept in the world of cybersecurity known as the CIA or the IAC. And it's a way to look at protecting data by ensuring the security of that data. First of all, confidentiality, keeping data a secret. We're all very comfortable with that concept. And I think most people think that cybersecurity means confidentiality. Well, the reality of it is that these attackers that are always trying to breach the confidentiality of your data have been working on this for decades. This really has been the historical focus for attackers and therefore the historical focus for defenders to focus heavily on protecting confidentiality of data, to keep it a secret. Well, that's confidentiality. There's also something known as integrity and availability. Integrity is making sure that data cannot be modified or deleted, and availability is making sure data is always accessible when it needs to be. So security is much broader than just confidentiality. It's also integrity and availability. And what has happened is that attackers have shifted their focus from just confidentiality to also integrity and availability. And the reason for that, we'll talk about in a minute, but it really comes down to money. So what about breaches of confidentiality? They've been going on for years. As we can see, they have continued to increase in the number of records being exposed, the number of breaches that are happening. But notice how it starts to slow down as we start approaching 2018, 2019, 2020. So it's actually decreasing. So are we winning the war? Well, no, not in any way, shape, or form are we winning the war. It's actually a shift in focus. Turns out it's really hard to sell breached data. It has to be stored off on the dark web. There has to be complicated cryptocurrency transactions. And then once someone has purchased that breached data, what do they do with it? How do they leverage it? How do they monetize it? It's actually pretty tough. So it's hard to sell breached data. So attacks on confidentiality are actually becoming less and less useful to attackers. When I mean, they might steal your credit card information, but these financial services organizations can shut that credit card down very, very quickly. Their fraud detection capabilities are so sophisticated now, their credit card numbers really don't have any value. And that's also starting to shift that way when it comes to identity protection as well. So it turns out it's much easier to make money with extortion. And that is what has really increased the volume of news articles around attacks going on across the world. It's not data breaches necessarily, it's really extortion. And what happens is attackers quite simply target the integrity and availability of data with ransomware. So as you can see, when it comes to practicing cybersecurity, it's a moving target. And there's always hard work to be done to prevent attackers from compromising your data. So how do we look at managing the risk around protecting data? It's really broken into this concept of there are threats, like an attacker on the internet, there are vulnerabilities, something like an unpatched piece of software, and then there's safeguards like antivirus software that can help protect those systems that have vulnerabilities. But it's important to recognize risk varies from system to system and situation to situation. So say we had a workstation that was vulnerable to ransomware. Humans are interacting with data all day long and they may interact with an email that has an attachment that is actually ransomware. So how do we reduce that risk? Well, one thing we do is we run anti-malware software or antivirus software. Well, you could reduce it even lower by also making sure you're not getting malicious emails coming into that workstation to begin with. So as you can see, this is sort of a conceptual framework of how you can manage risk related to data. And that's what cybersecurity is really all about. It's about trying to reduce risk. The challenge is there's a lot of things you can do to reduce the risk. As you can see, running only supported software, making sure that the software is configured to have a minimal attack surface, and so on. And if all of this has to be controlled through policies and procedures. So what is the point? It's a management problem. And that's why the Eccles School can help you build a career in cybersecurity that focuses on management of cybersecurity. There are thousands of tools that can be put in place, technical tools, process-oriented training, lots and lots of resources to secure an environment. It's now a coordination, planning, execution, monitoring, and enhancement problem. It's a management problem. So why would you want a career in cybersecurity? Well, one maybe obvious reason is, is there's an unbelievable amount of unfilled cybersecurity jobs in the U.S. right now. And it's, it's because there are not enough skilled cybersecurity personnel available. So there's tremendous demand if you can gather the right knowledge and basic skills. There are tremendous opportunities from a job standpoint. Here's a couple of statistics from a Microsoft blog article written by the president of Microsoft in just October 2021. One out of every 20 open jobs in the United States is a cybersecurity job. That seems like a very unrealistic number, but the data supports that. That's how big a deficit there is in the world of cybersecurity jobs. So for every three jobs in cybersecurity, one of them is sitting empty. We need humans to step in and deploy all of these safeguards to protect data. You know, working in cybersecurity is going to be very stable for decades to come. It's challenging, 
because there's lots of change, there's lots of complexity, there's a lot of technology, there's a lot of training, there's a lot of understanding and documenting involved. It's challenging to work in cybersecurity. And also you're heavily involved in every aspect of the business because cybersecurity touches every aspect of the business. It gives you exposure to all kinds of things happening inside the business. It's not a, a pigeonholed role, it's very broad. And it, thereby it makes a difference when you're applying these safeguards and you're protecting the organization, you're protecting all aspects of the business. And the business leaders understand that. And that's why generally speaking, the compensation for a cybersecurity professional is higher on average than other IT type positions. And an average pay of 105,000 a year is because it is challenging. There is high demand and it's involved in lots of aspects of the business. And it's critical to the operation of modern day businesses. So how would you start a cybersecurity career? Well, first of all, it's really up to you. You have to be prepared to think hard. It takes a lot of mental energy. You're gonna be solving hard problems and it takes a lot of persistence. You have to be very, very committed to not giving up. So how can the University of Utah help you? Well, we have programs in cybersecurity management and we can provide you with knowledge, the understanding of the principles of cybersecurity, the best practices, current thinking in terms of the future and how we can protect data as technology evolves, but also skills. We're a very experiential program with a lot of hands-on labs exposing you to the actual technology used by attackers, so you understand what they're doing, but even more so by the defenders. What are the tools you use to actually configure these systems that are holding data so that you can defend against these attackers? And career advising. We have a very capable career services center that's very engaged in industry and helping you find those jobs that you need to get started in cybersecurity or to advance in cybersecurity. So from an education standpoint, we have a graduate certificate in cybersecurity management and we have a master's of science in cybersecurity management. As you can see, it's 15 credits versus 30 credits. Both of them have leadership, technical, and data-oriented tracks. We'll look at those in a minute. Both of them are available in person or online. These courses that constitute this graduate certificate and master's degree are very practical, applied, execution, get things done oriented. The foundation knowledge is there to make sure you can solve those hard problems that are new, that you don't have an immediate answer to, that you can think critically, then you can communicate well with others. But the reality of it is, is this program is very, very focused on practical application. And that's what creates value because employers hire people to solve the problems, to execute the programs, to minimize risk in the organization. As part of the Masters of Science in Cybersecurity Management, you'll be able to work on a capstone project where you study for an industry certification in security because no other area in IT relies upon industry certifications more than security. So it's important that you prepare for that and you'll be achieving these certifications as you go forward in your career. And this program is actually very practically oriented towards getting things done, which is exactly what the industry IT certifications are focused on. So it's a great preparation for getting industry certifications to complement your graduate certificate or graduate degree in cybersecurity management. And if you want to work on a certificate and you're part of the MSIS program at the University of Utah, you actually can count MSIS credits towards a graduate certificate in cybersecurity management. So you could graduate with both of those. Those of you that are even more focused on cybersecurity would focus on the Masters of Cybersecurity Management. It's unique. There are not a lot of programs across the country yet that focus on the management aspects of cybersecurity, but it's a growing area as the world recognizes more and more that this is a management problem, not just a technology problem. So for the 30 credits in the master's degree, you'll start with the core requirements of 21 hours. And very briefly, the systems analysis and design class teaches you to think critically, to think about data flows, documentation, project management, communicating with visuals and in writing. This is all so important to cybersecurity management because of the complexity. So it teaches you those raw skills. Networking servers teaches you the foundation of the internet, TCP IP and modern day operating systems. And that is important because all data that you'll be protecting in your career in cybersecurity reside on operating systems on applications that are connected to networks. So you need to understand the foundation of how those components work so that you can work on protecting them. And then as you move into the cybersecurity specific core, you learn broadly about all aspects of cybersecurity and the management of those in 6570. In 6572, you focus on the detect and response component of cybersecurity, where you're monitoring for attacks and you're responding to those attacks 
in a way that can protect the organization. In 6573, you focus on eliminating vulnerabilities to begin with. The risk is inherently reduced as vulnerabilities go away. If we'd had no vulnerabilities, there wouldn't be such a thing as cybersecurity. And so recognize that that's an area you really need to focus on is just eliminating vulnerabilities. Then we don't even need to be detecting you know, malicious behavior on the network because that malicious behavior cannot occur when there's no vulnerabilities. In 6574, you tackle a very important concept and that is, is risk, formally assessing risk and managing that risk and doing so in conjunction with the regulatory requirements which are growing in sophistication and prevalence. Whether it's privacy of data or security of data or reporting when there are breaches, there are numbers of laws that have been established that you must follow in this day and age and more of them are coming. And this class discusses those as well as frameworks you can use to help manage the risk and ensure compliance. So frameworks of safeguards that are industry adopted as best practices so that you can achieve your compliance and risk goals and those frameworks are discussed in depth. And then of course our master's project that focuses on certifications as we discussed. Notice that the electives follow three different areas. If you want to go more technical, understand more about software security, cloud computing, uh, advanced data management principles, or forensics, how you actually investigate how an attack occurred in a legally defensible manner. Those are all the technical electives. But notice also we have a track around data. Data is so important, not just from a protection standpoint, but using data to help protect other data, using advanced techniques in machine learning and data mining to detect when attackers are attacking and actually use that technology to help mitigate the risk of these attacks. And then of course, leadership from project management and product management, building in security as you build products, and all the way to leadership, strategy, ethics, and how you can be a strong leader in cybersecurity. So if you're ready to get engaged in a cybersecurity career, by applying for this program. You can do so on the David Eccles School of Business website. If you're currently an MSIS student and you want to convert to this master's degree, go see your advisor. You potentially can convert over and finish up your studies under the MSCM. So what about the graduate certificate? Well, it's very similar as you can see, minus some of those foundation technology classes. This is more focused on just cybersecurity. Again, these core classes, and you can choose an elective from the same set that we have for the master's degree. If this is a graduate certificate you would like to apply for, either to work on in the future or to receive as part of your Master's of Science and in Information Systems, you can do so by applying on the DSB website. If you have questions about this, there's three different areas. You can talk with admissions advisors specifically about these programs, if you're looking at joining the programs, if you're already part of the program or part of the MSIS or MSBA programs and you would like to look at converting to an MSCM or doing that in addition to your other graduate studies, reach out to your academic advisors. If you have general questions about course content, career advice, etc., please reach out to one of the program directors and we'd be happy to talk with you about this program. And good luck as you move forward in your cybersecurity career. It's just critically important that we get as many people as we can trained and ready and able and capable of defending our data because the attacks are getting worse and worse and we need all the people we can get. Come join us at the David Eccles School of Business and study cybersecurity management.